The following is a presentation of TFNN. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Every trading day, live at 10 a.m. Eastern. Call now, toll free at 877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Now, Tom and Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien. Fortunate this morning to be joined by our man Basil Chapman filling in for Tom. Basil, good morning. Good morning to you. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. How about yourself? Very good, thank you. Good. Well, to start things off, Basil, we have a negative market once again, except for the NASDAQ. NASDAQ just eat in the positive territory, up one point, trading at 8,099. You have S&Ps right now, negative by six, trading at 2,970. Dow Jones, negative by 91, trading at 26,714. We got bonds with a 2.06 10 year, and we got uh, the gold contract down a bit, but relatively bouncing off the lows, jumping over here a moment. Gold right now trading at 13.93 and crude oil trading at 57.22. The market's getting a bit of a bounce on the open this morning. And um, as we started off, Basil, let's jump over to our man, Mr. Kevin Hicks from TD Ameritrade, Think or Swim. Folks, right here, right after our program, Fast Market with Kevin and the team over there on the TD Ameritrade Network. They always have some interesting conversations to cover. Kevin Hicks, good morning. Good morning, Tom. Good morning, Basil. How you guys doing? Doing well. How Good are you? Good morning, Kevin. All right. You know, I, I hope we have time, Tommy, because I've got about two hours of things I need to talk about here in this is, next uh, five minutes or so. Is there? You I better mean, talk quick. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, you know, this is one of those days after a pretty quiet Monday in terms of data and things to talk about. The pace of this week is really going to pick up. And it starts with some of the data that we got today, NFIB Small Business and Red Book, both interesting numbers, NFIB a little weaker than we thought it would be, but still showing, you know, some solid strength, just not as high as it was in May. And then Red Book, a blowout number from Red Book, up 6.2%. So that's showing strength in chain stores, discounters, and re retailers in general. So... Uh, we've got a jolt number coming up here right at uh, 9 o'clock. So, you know, leading into Jerome Powell and everything, I still think, even though Jerome Powell speaks twice this week, guys, I still feel the biggest data point, the biggest market mover is going to be Thursday's CPI because that will, for all intents and purposes, lock in what the Fed's going to do, I think. Yeah, that's 8.30 a.m. Eastern Time, I think, Thursday morning. Thursday. And I'll be waiting for that, too, Kevin, for sure. As you know, it's interesting that we start getting Chairman Powell tomorrow and Thursday, and I'm sure he's prepared. He always seems to do a really good job of at least saying what he wants to say in each moment and not misstepping on his own words. Um, but it'll be interesting to see um, as that happens. We have, you know, 2.06 on the 10-year, but the market 100% that it's going to cut, Kevin. And the conversation right. seems to be between 25 and 50 basis points um, that people are trying to digest, if that's even possible, the 50 basis point question. Right. But unlike Janet Yellen, Jerome Powell is a little bit more inclined, at least early in his tenure as Fed chief, to make some headlines. Yeah. So that's why I think traders need to really watch what, what he says because, you know, remember, him and James Bullard both came out and really discounted any mention or thought of a half-point rate cut. Yes. I think they took that off the board. So that pretty much, as long as CPI doesn't come in and show any kind of, a, you know, hotness or warmth in, in the CPI number, and the expectations are that it won't, that should really set the Fed on their path to a quarter point rate cut, something that I've never seen in my career with an unemployment rate at 3.7 and, and the, the strength of the economy we're getting. Hard to imagine the Fed cutting rates, but I think that's exactly what they're going to do. Yeah, markets at all-time highs, S&P at all-time highs. I think this, this might be like the third consecutive day down, but very muted days down, right? I mean, I mean you're talking about, and I talked, looked at the VIX, even 14 on the VIX. Um, if it's three negative days down, well, isn't Considering where we've come from, this is really a very minor pullback for three days, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And I think, Basil, you tell me what you think. I really think that we are feeding off some weakness 
in Europe. I mean, the DAX down 1% today. That's affecting our market. I think the, the, the weak foreign markets, Sunday night into Monday morning, that combined with the uh, Apple downgrade, I thought all those things really kept up wet blanket on the market yesterday and and you know the uh except for the you know the the uh uh japanese markets everything else was red again last night you know that feeds into our futures overnight i expect some some people to be nibbling on this market today though with uh you know because the down opening after the foreign market lower. it'll be interesting to see how this day finishes Kevin, with the RTH at highs, almost almost back to the high from uh, last year, and with the dollar rallying, and uh, some of the statistics that are coming out, the, what the Fed looks at, I I don't see the 50, 50 points. I see twenty five cents, but um, wow, that would be so unusual, wouldn't it? Oh, I don't think there's any chance. Basil, that they're going to cut by 50 basis points. I think a quarter of a point is as aggressive as they want to be. I think Jerome Powell, by nature, is a hawk. I think he's going to get dragged kicking and screaming into this rate cut. But because, in essence, what is Jerome Powell admitting if he cuts rates July 31st? He's basically admitting that, that the December rate hike was a mistake. Sure. Big mistake, so, yeah. yeah. Right. So, I, I, you know, that won't be easy for a hawk like Jerome Powell to, to admit and, and agree to. But I still think with expectations for CPI on Thursday to be basically unchanged on the CPI, the year over year 1.6. That, you know, that is that will signal a Fed rate cut for sure. And Kevin, so I want to jump a little bit. I saw that yeah. you guys now have a TD Ameritrade Network app that people can download to, to watch what you guys are doing out there. Go on the App Store and, and, and you can download now the TD Ameritrade Network app and you can call up our shows and watch live and look at old, you know, our archived events yeah it, it's, it's i got pretty, it on my it's phone cool. it's it's <laughs> awesome man i was interested of course when i saw it i pulled it up and it's pretty intuitive folks in terms of the shows they have what's airing now when it's airing um checking it out so download that from the app store and uh for today's show kevin of course i'm sure there'll be some discussion of chairman powell and the rates yep. being there um beyond that we had pepsi out with their earnings today pretty decent down like seven tenths percent right now though and uh what else do we have going on that you guys are going to be talking about on the program today Today we're going to have some fun because it's in that chasm between when earnings are over and really earnings start picking up. What we're going to cover today is the, the consumer discretionaries, and we're going to make it fun. We're going to cover McDonald's, Chipotle, and Yum Brands. Nice. So we're going to cover everything that's everything that 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 is fast food in the discu consumer discretionaries. We're going to cover all three of those. You know what? I have to say it's funny. I'm driving into work today, Kevin. And I just happened to see a McDonald's and they had a deal two Big Macs for five dollars. And I was like, man, two Big Macs is a lot of Big Macs to be eating for five dollars. And, <laughs> and it just went over my head as you said that. But uh, interesting. Yeah, and a, and a coupon for angioplasty. Right? That's what. in the sodium. <laughs> I actually I've been checking out sodium, folks. You should you should keep track of how much sodium you eat because a Big Mac alone has got over a thousand milligrams. I just happened to learn that and you're only supposed to have about two thousand a day. So that's yeah. what clear. I said that's your whole day man. What do you know? But hey, uh, but they are doing well that company for sure. We look forward to the conversation Kevin. We appreciate the update and we look forward to the show in 45 minutes. Thanks so much for having me on. Thanks Kevin. Thank Stay you, tuned Kevin. folks. Basil and I are going to be coming right back. The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. The Taz Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of Taz Market Profile, the Taz Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. 
Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the TAS Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at TAS has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the TAS order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $197 a month with the risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the TAS Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you play trades. Sign up today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Folks, Tommy O'Brien with Basil Chapman this morning. We get the Dow negative 106, S&P is negative by about six, NASDAQ pretty much flat right now, and Russell negative by about four. So Basil, what's been on your radar this morning? Um, like we we're talking with Kevin, pretty muted day, nothing too substantial. Uh, you know, you, I saw a headline today, third straight day down, and I was like, that's kind of blowing things out of the water when they've been such marginal action. Well, there are a couple of things that will be very important on the Friday close. This will be the first full week of uh, July. Last sure. week was a shortened week. So the weekly chart is at a ledger in the Chapman Wave at a leg E. And this E could be, um, there's nothing else that I could count it as because of the way the Chapman Wave works from the low that was made back in December at 21,712 nice. in Dow. You just count each successively higher peak, and this is the fifth highest peak, and it's an E. However, what I am looking at here is that the Dow is the only index, uh, there are a number of stocks, but the only index, key index, I should say, that has gone to only a C in the Chapman Wave, and usually we get to a D. And if you look at the, okay. uh, the SPY, that's the S&P, that's already gone to a D, and it's had a pullback, but it's really a very minor pullback. Sure. Here's the QQQ, which is actually, as you had mentioned earlier on, let's see, is it still up? One, two, three. Uh, yeah, it's uh, up 13 cents. Uh, look, even basically out of the last five sessions, almost all of them are green, even though yesterday was down. It closed almost at the high. So this is very benign when you're looking at what would happen if this was a serious top. Usually sure. by the third session, you should be down a lot sharper. The day's young. Anything can happen. But this is what I think is really important. When, you, when you're thinking about what the Fed has to do, it also has to do with uh, the way certain uh, sectors of the market have acted and reacted. And I think that it's important. I've got the index that I call Chapman Wave Cash Index. It's really not an index. It's only four stocks. But look, Sintas is at a, almost at a high, an all-time high, and that's overall uniform rentals. Yes. To me, that's just saying internally at this particular point, and granted that this is always a late 
indicated because people, if the market is going to highs, people are still buying overalls and rental, um, um, you know, anything that has to do with rentals. Sure. Um, Uniforms, and they only get the yeah. message later on. Right. But it's still at highs. Uh, Amazon, which is uh, part of the, that's the A in cash, is almost at um, the previous high. In fact, it just is about to take it out. That's the high from uh, <laughs> April. And 2050 is the all-time high, it's right and up it there, is yeah. less than 90 points away from that. And just it's, to add to it, we, we got six days away from that prime day that they have two days, and they usually react very well remarkable. around that. And that's just anecdotally, but they get to cherry-pick statistics, and so you're going to get press releases that are mind-bending, you know, the numbers that they do it, on those two days. It might be numbers. I'm not sure if it'll be the actual cash reward in the end. But the numbers should be there for sure. Sure. So Amazon, right? That's it's and almost even if it's just a marketing opportunity, right? To how much Correct. business they do over two days, it's astounding, and they usually react well. Yeah. And in fact, it is astounding. It's actually it incredible. It is. So SPY, that's the S and P uh, deposit receipts, that's the S and P uh, index trading vehicle. And it's just off the all-time high, and okay. Home Depot is really in that whole area of construction. Sure. Right, uh, this is uh, to do it yourself. It's everything. Oh, huge there. indicator, yeah. And it's it's even commercially using Home Depot, huge, huge. You know, just beyond um, retail, yeah. And it's within a, a point, a couple of points of its all-time high. Yeah, look at that chart. So to yeah. me, if the if you think. And don't tell me the Fed isn't looking at something very similar to what I'm looking at here. So they, if they're looking at the old guard, like the United Technologies, my other index, the Dow Quartet, Caterpillar, IBM, a Triple M, and UTX, that's that's the the big cyclicals. That's different. So I think that they kind of, I think they're in the 25 cent, uh, 25 uh, point 25 area. Yes. Because why, they are. They need to have rules. They've got their rules. They don't want to break their rules. They're forced to kind of leverage away from the rules occasionally, like like they did in um, December. Um, but at the same time, I think they're kind of stuck, and they, I, I don't see they, how they yeah, can do anything Yeah, I think that's different. what they've yeah. hinted to in terms of hinting to the 25 basis points and hinting away from the 50, that that wouldn't even be possible um, with, I believe, but they need they need the fifty for later. I mean, you you always right. have to have some some <laughs> firing yes. power for later on. Yes, I know. As as low we are, how low can you go? Well, um, that's that's an interesting question because there's there's an think of it as a commodity. You remember what happened to the semiconductors, and as the semiconductors sure. were in greater and greater use and greater demand, so the price came down Sky. because of international competition. Yep. So if you think of it as interest rates. Or under international competition to see who can have the lowest rate, they're not, they don't really want to. Yeah. But they forced in that, that category. The outlier is even right now the United States, because even though we have our lowest rates or close to our lowest rates, and the competition around the world for money, it is uh, loaning money is it's there. It is so, and it's I, in I, it's in power you know powerhouse countries too. Not just talking about you know Germany or wherever you correct. know strong strong countries that you can just marginal barely positive interest rates if not negative. Yeah, and then we used to think that China was the the holder of most of our bonds, but it turns out that Japan actually has a greater proportion. So even that mix has changed. So. China's leverage now is really their demand because they've now raised the overall um, cost of living has risen, the standard of living has risen, and I think yeah. they want to keep it up. Yeah. And as a result, they are, I, I don't think it's them suddenly selling bonds and all that for our market to tank. They want our market to hold up. They want us to be buying as much as we can, and in a way, we leverage to them as well. Oh, the definitely. Is, it's, it's a, a back and forth relationship, time. right, for sure. Isn't it it? Is. They need that American consumer, at least in this stage right now, because of the power that we have with our wallets, right? I would. And, and also, I think that they have, um, they might just sort of shrug their shoulders and raise their eyebrows, but in terms of the verbal uh, back and forth between the U.S. and, and China, um, that's just part of the game. They know that that's the modus sure. operandi of this president. Sure. Um, and I've always said that he's a 1% winner. He wants 51% to call it a win. Right.
And that's the way you've got to look at it. Don't yeah. get carried away with all the words and all the every, The deed is 51% to say we won, whatever it is. So I think that we've got to look at it as some deal will be made. It won't be quite the compromise. It'll be a big compromise, but it'll look like a win, probably for both sides, and it's going to take a lot of time. I found it interesting. There was a story I was trying to pull it up. Uh, one of the, I believe it was the Chinese, one of the envoy ambassador or one of the negotiators, um, and I will pull it up, just uh, created a Twitter account. And it was ironic because Twitter's not allowed in China. <laughs> so yeah, they, I, I they really are on the PR comments. where it's like they don't care if they don't allow it in China. They're going to have a Twitter account because the conversation is going on over here. And guess where it's going on? On Twitter sometimes, right? Courtesy right. of the president. You know, let's look at Twitter. You know, that should help Twitter. Let's see. I always think, I mean, Twitter, Twitter, Twitter could not have it more made for the last six years. And still, you know, in terms of the, the amount of mentions they get. Yeah, I know. They're only at 36. Exactly. They're struggling, man. <laughs> come on back, folks. Baz and I come right back. Hi, folks. Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Tommy O'Brien with Basil Chapman. This morning, we get the NASDAQ eking into positive territory, trading at 81.01, up two points right now. S&P is negative by five, Dow off by just negative 99 points at this point. Uh, so one of the companies that did, does uh, have earnings this morning was Pepsi. It was pretty interesting, Basil. Decent earnings, and um, Pepsi pulling back, though. 
So market cap, 185 billion, less jumped less than 1% pre-market. Let's see where we are. Here we go. Earnings per share, a buck 54 versus a buck 50. Revenue, 16.449 versus 16.426. And to jump over to the chart, is they're in a tough business right now, Pepsi, in terms of soda, some candy, some fast food. Um, that number jumped up to 134.67. I came in here. I had heard that news. I was expecting to talk about Pepsi trading higher. And then, boom, I mean, it's off those lows, but still in negative territory by about two-tenths of a percent. But just look at it. It is actually at, uh, let me just finish my notation here. Yeah. Uh, this is at, well, so <laughs> I just pulled up the chart. The but yeah, chart. you got it right there. It's remarkable. And it's at, at highs. I mean, it's within 135s was the high just uh, three weeks ago, and it's trading at 132. It's amazing. And, you, know, you know, Kevin was talking about McDonald's. Look at McDonald's. It is so, amazing. I agree. I tell you why this is such an unusual market. Yeah. You're looking at areas that were really for not just recently, but forever have yeah. been called the, the defensive area. Like, what happens right. when things are getting kind of the markets getting a little choppy? You start to look at uh, Clorox, you look at McDonald's, you look at uh, um, Pepsi. McDonald's is within pa points of its all-time high. Yeah. So this is such a crazy market in the sense that the tradition has been, this is, this is exactly the world we're in. If you're looking at our Congress, you're looking at Senate, everything's been turned upside down. The old <laughs> God has been shaken up. And the new guard thinks that they are, I mean, you saw that in the U.S. soccer, right? That's Everything's right. turned upside down. Um, the result isn't the result that traditionally you've anticipated because there's, a, there's a, another side to it that has huge social and socioeconomic and political uh, connotations. And now we're looking at almost the same thing in the market. You're looking at United Technologies, one of the great companies in the world, uh, trading way off the 144 all-time high double top that it made from last year to this year, yeah. trading at 129. And you're looking at Pep Pepsi Cola. You're looking at the dollar moving higher. Gold had a big run. They don't usually go together, and they've been moving. Everything is different to what you would anticipate and, and those companies the to their credit too some of them they've done a good job of managing the the woes that a uh, quote unquote soda company like pepsi now they of course have i believe pizza hut they or they had they, right. yeah they have a bunch um, of other things but then McDonald's, especially, right? I mean, fast food in terms of, we were just talking about people generally um, are very aware nowadays that eating two Big Macs for $5 at least are aware of the unhealthiness of, the, of that type of food. So that exactly speaks to the issue. I, about, a, about two years ago, or maybe a year and a half ago, I, I just, for fun, I would mention to friends, I'd say, you know, we're talking, talking, and I'd say, you tell me, which stock do you think is higher? Whole Foods <laughs> or McDonald's in the stock market, that is. Sure. Oh, Whole Foods must be. I mean, everybody loves healthy, Whole Foods. Healthy. It's got to be higher, right? Yeah. No, no that's McDonald's. not necessarily the reality right. reality is, and that's the reason why there was such a huge shock when Trump got in, because most people didn't understand that there's a middle ground. There's something else going on that isn't always being reported. Sure. And that's exactly, we're looking Definitely. at Pepsi, and we're looking at the cleverness of their modus operandi, their plan. I remember, and dear, what was her name, um, who just retired from Pepsi? She was Yeah, fabulous. I know the woman that was the CEO, yeah, unfortunately. Yeah, and she did just such a good, and I Definitely. kept hearing, and I'm saying, how is she going to accomplish this? And she did it. Yeah. And she kept And they've doing expanded it. dramatically beyond even the, and I just focus on the drink side because that's Pepsi and, you know, soda is really one of the worst things you can have for yourself, folks. So that's, you know, dealing with that, but they've, they've diversified tremendously even on that in terms of Absolutely. waters, flavored waters. So um, that's what, yeah. so the issue really is you've got to be digging deeper. You've got to throw away preconceptions. You know, Larry always says, trade what you see. And that's really the market. You've got to be looking at, the nitty gritties, as I said, I like to do the uh, the, the um, MRI or the X-ray of the sure. patient because you know I, I keep showing this. In fact, I wonder if I've still got it here. Do I have this? Let me open up this chart because I was doing it while we were talking yesterday. Oh, it's on a different chart. I had a chart of the monthly Dow. Oh wait, maybe I did it on the S&P. Let's go to the S&P. And I, yes, I think this is the one. 
Uh, is this? Yes, there it is. So throughout the Obama years, when Obama, and then there was all there the anti, you remember there were these, these groups that were, went to major cities, they, what was the name of them? Uh, they were anti-capitalism and... Uh, Occupy. Occupy, right. So you had Occupy, you had everything. Obama never spoke about the stock market. Stock market went to one of the greatest gains during his presidency. It's remarkable, And then you get yeah. Trump. This is Mr. Stock Market, and it <laughs> continues going up. It does. So you've got to throw away some of those preconceptions. Speaking to someone the other day, so few people actually talk to me about the market these days, but a friend of mine said, so what, what should we be doing here? And there's someone who's What's the answer, Basil? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I said to him, you know, what are you doing? He says, well, I, I'm in, I'm reluctant, I'm, I'm kind of in. I said, you know, Take a little bit off if you're nervous so that you can sleep well. Sure. And you've got, a, you've got a mixed portfolio. You've got bonds. You've got stocks. Just make it easy for yourself. Don't make it complicated. Yeah. Then, and, you know, and really, I think as long as you're, if you're you know, an, an investor like that type of person, sounds like they might be, um, within, within I, I think everything's going to be fine. I think there might be just some volatile times over like the next year, year and a half as we make it through this next election. But that's just volatility. You know what I mean? That's just a lot of like uncertainty as things get sorted out. And so when that passes, things things will settle back except, down either except way. Look at this this chart. This chart is showing that um, even the S&P, uh, having gone to a new high in my monthly chart, yes. if this is a brand new leg A and it's taken one, two, three, four, five, this is the sixth month with a higher high. Yes. Um, this, if it's if it's F, that's one thing. But if it's A, F it says, oh, be careful. A says, are you kidding? This thing's going higher for the next. It's only at A, and you should at least get to a D. Hey, if we're so, going to start cutting <laughs> rates, which it seems like we are, there's going to be cheap money available. We know the companies love that, and um, anything yeah. is possible, so man. I, I, I'm just saying, don't, yeah. don't make it complicated. If no, and I agree, in, as in, you know, nicely, if, I, if I had money in the market, and I just, I, I wouldn't be worried, as in there's plenty of potential the upside. The only risk I really see is that just there's some more volatility than you know, we've really been used to as this thing's just chugged higher for the better part of Absolutely. 10 years. Absolutely. After um, six months eight, of higher highs yeah. uh, in the month, you've got to expect at least, you know, some kind of a monthly pullback at some point. But uh, technically, I think not only that, yeah, you know, I had this chart up just a moment ago. I spoke about it yesterday. And what did it say? I keep forgetting the extra acronym. TINA. There is no alternative. Right. And that's really the issue for a lot of people. Right. So I, I, I just think that we, we tend to make things a lot more complicated than they should be. There's no reason why you shouldn't be always a little nervous. It's always yes, good no, because be the money's at risk. That keeps you uh, alert and attentive Absolutely. to what's going on. Absolutely. All right, folks, come on back. Basil and I, we're going to take a three-minute break. We'll be right back. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you'd like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. 
Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. Tommy O'Brien with Basil Chapman this morning. Basil, I just wanted to briefly touch on, so unfortunately, uh, Ross Burrow has passed away. Most people are familiar with, uh, ran for president twice. Just pretty interesting um, guy, obviously brilliant philanthropist, patriot for sure, it says in here, being able to run for president and build a company worth billions in terms of technology. Pretty interesting. He started his first company, Basel, in 1962 with a thousand bucks called Electronic Data Systems. That name sounds so fitting right now. I can't imagine 1962 naming a company, let alone building electronic data systems in terms of what existed in 1962 to the likes of electronics. And, and very successful. And he really was data dependent. Uh, I mean, that, I that imagine company because was uh, terrific. That it just company, seems yeah. ahead of its time to even know that electronics and data and systems, the three words in that name, are going to come to run the world, essentially. Um, and then sold that company, sold another company two decades later um, to Dell for $3.9 billion. So the 92 election, so I was only 12 years old, but to speak to how really you know, um, nationwide, I'm sure people listening, I even remember, he had a lead with 39%. Let me pull up here. I had it up. We'll get to the independents. There we go. So he had a lead of 39% in June as an independent candidate to Bush's 31, Clinton's 25. He dropped out of the race and then rejoined later, and uh, he came in with about 20% of the vote after that. So if you think politics are a little crazy right now, which I think they may be, um, imagine a third-party candidate leading with 39% of the vote, dropping out for three weeks, then deciding to come back in, and, of course, throwing quite a uh, handkerchief into that election that Clinton and ended And mix up. things up a lot. Yes, I mean, that was I a big see. Shake -up. Yeah, yeah uh, pretty remarkable for sure. Okay. Back to uh, back to the markets. Uh, what do you have up here, Basil? What are we looking at? Right now, I'm looking at the dollar. The dollar is up a little bit. It's at 97.47. If you look at the monthly chart, so um, I always like to talk about uh, the market. As far as I'm concerned, you're really looking at only three directional uh, activity activities. One is a straight line up and down. The other is the cup. And the other is the arch formation. And you can see how many cup and arches it's made. And this last one essentially says that in 97.47, if you do a horizontal line, you go all, all the way back to about uh, July, August of last year, and uh, you'd be at almost the same price. So it's been in a trading band, but the fact that during this period you've seen gold spiral. Um, that you know, this is a really big move for gold. Yeah. 1167 on the continuous contract to the most recent high in the 1440s. Uh, that's a big move. Uh, so I, I spoke to you about this yesterday. I think, I, I, I the focus I've had is to say that if you treat each uh, sector and each instrument as a separate parcel, 
you're much better off than trying to link them. And that's, I think, what we've seen in the bonds. We've seen that in the gold. We've seen that in the dollar. And each one has had its own kind of trajectory. And if you're looking at the TLT, um, and what's interesting is here the market is at all-time highs or just about all-time highs, and yet you've got bonds at multi-year highs, so the yields are multi-year lows. Yes. You've got the dollar in a higher range. If you're looking at it in terms of a yearly chart pattern, it's in a higher level now than it has been from when it broke down back in two, June of 2017. So we're talking about two years and it's back. So when I when we were talking with, with Kevin and then what we you and I spoke about is that there are so many parts of this puzzle that in the normal market sphere that we'd be looking at over the over the not years but decades, things are different. And you know, everyone says, Oh my god, now you've just said things are different. <laughs> um, that's a problem. No, they really they've been for a long time. This whole Japanization of our bond yields. We've not seen that since the 1920s, I dare say, going back Definitely. to the 1920s. So this is different, and and the demand on each side, why is the dollar acting well? Because I think it's representing the state of our United States uh, uh, economic uh, mode at this particular point. Yeah. And it represents that we do. We're not doing as well as maybe we were back in January of 2017. Um, but we're doing uh, very, very nicely. So that's what it's showing. And if you look at the bonds, that's international demand is forcing yields down. Gold is, I think I still talk about it as more the currency of fear. Uh, it makes sense. That's why silver didn't move up quite as sharply as, as gold, if, if I'm correct. So yeah, vastly I, I different think that for you're sure. looking at, and not only that, you've got crude oil more at the lows than the highs. It's not up in the 70s and 80s, and it's not down in the 40s, but it's right in the lower range of the 57 area. So I think that this is, you, in, a, in a sense, you're looking at the price as Goldilocks, but all the worries are there. And I think that they, when we speak about the Fed, I. I think the Fed knows exactly what it wants to do. It's going to say, let the market take care of a lot of what we we would like, um, and we'll just be we, we've got our a normality, and we're going to stick to our our traditional way of looking at the market in this particular new Fed um, maker. <laughs> it is a new environment for sure. Yeah. As we speak to. Uh cut whether it's 25 or 50 basis points is the conversation and i'm sure that 50 is very likely not even in the scenario but that's the only conversation because the conversation is not is it 25 or nothing um because 25 is almost locked in which is pretty remarkable at you know all-time highs just jumping back to gold one thing that i keep my eye on we've talked about it before i think we talked about it yesterday as well basil is that just taking the lows from that beginning of that run in may let alone going all the way back to the run we had in the 1100s um you're looking at a 38 percent of like 1377. Now we've been hovering. And how often does that happen? Yeah. Uh, you know? Right. Right. So we've been hovering right around there. As in, this is an important area. Um, you know, if you really see gold, I'd say you know pull back dramatically into that move. That's not going to be too bullish for that price as we pull back. And I'm sure, as you say, my head goes right to well, if gold does that, what does that mean rates are going to do, or what does that mean uh, the dollar is going to be doing if gold pulls back to the, you know, 1360, 1340? Um, and I'm not but, too sure. That, that was my point. That each one is working independently. But if you look at and that's what I'm saying, right? Where I'm not too sure of that, but I would keep my eye on some of those levels just because of where gold has been staying focused on that one entity. But go ahead, yeah. I was just going to say, I, you remember I spoke to you about patterns, how they repeat, and I said sure. there's this kind of flag pattern, and I've drawn in the rectangle, and I mentioned that the TLT has the same pattern. Now, there's a fabulous move up, went also yes. to a PF that went sideways and popped once. Now it's back in this rectangle. These rectangle patterns can last a lot longer than your patience, and <laughs> essentially what it's doing is it's saying, now this, this is the real, this is the bull bear show, and that's exactly what we're looking at here. They're this fighting. is the fight They're between fighting. the bulls. That's right, in the box. Which which side's going to win? Which side is it going to break out on that uh, box, right? I mean, that's that's it, right? That's right. And not only that, the longer you stay in the box, 
the greater this is a magnet in this case the 131 to 132 area sure. and the greater the chance that at some point you'll have a little dive below it and, and it's, it's been hanging more. on the upper end of that box though for the, the better end. part sure. of uh what, a couple weeks three weeks, weeks? Yeah. yeah all right folks basil and i we're going to take a three minute break check out the opening call on the front page of tfnm basil services hawks through all those charts every morning you see the great work he does right there basil and i'll be right back I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, six and three months timer digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well the fact is markets can be timed and i'll teach you the exact set of tools that i use that has transformed me into one of the best at what i do sign up for mastering probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where i take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. sign up today it's amazing to think that Tom O'Brien started his weekly gold report 17 years ago with the first issue published April 7th, 2002, when gold was trading at under $300 per ounce. Gold peaked at more than $1,900 in 2011, and after spending many years consolidating at lower prices, gold may be poised for its next big run. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, South Africa, African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific iSell recommendations. As of April 1st of this year, the Gold Report currently has eight active positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 8% for each open trade. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your Gold Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFN.com. Don't let gold's next big run pass you by. Sign up today. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Tommy O'Brien with Basil Chapman. We got the markets trading higher. NASDAQ up 14 points, as in high off those lows. S&P is just negative by two now. The Dow negative by just about 80 points. I have the NASDAQ up here right now. From those overnight lows, we're down there at about NASDAQ 100, um, 77.43. We're up at 78.24. You're talking about more than a full percent from that lows. As, uh, as you said, Basil, the day is young, not even 11 a.m. What do we got coming up on the Tiger Technicians Hour at noon? So in my work, I always like to, let me just go to this chart, I like to identify the lowest low bar and merely count each successively higher peak. On the fourth highest peak, other things can happen. You can see that right here in the, uh, uh, let me go to it, in the E-mini, in the two-minute chart, we just made a peak D. Price is still hanging in very nicely. It's only a C in the five-minute chart. 
only a C in the 10 minute chart. So that suggests we could go a little higher than this. So I'm going to be talking about patterns and I'm going to be talking about the reason why we are still remaining long from the low of June the 3rd in our Dow long position. And we still have other positions that we are long and why I'm, I'm looking at this and saying there's a really good chance that within the context of the market last week, I was expecting a very choppy week for this particular week, why the choppiness could continue. But I cannot ignore the fact that the Qs and the SPY have made Ds and Es as highs, so they can have a little sideways movement here. The, what will change things completely is if by Friday on the weekly basis, there is a really big sharp sell-off in the Dow, the S&P, and the Qs going into the Friday close. And that'll say, OK, now we can have more of a timeout. But I like what I see, I must say, at this point. All right, Basil, I appreciate you filling in for Tom joining me. It's always a pleasure. Thank you very much. Thank you. We look forward to the show at noon. Folks, stay tuned. We have Fast Market coming up next. Don't forget, go check out that TD Ameritrade Network app. Pretty cool as well. Stay tuned for Basil at Noon live programming all today. Steve Rhodes, Dave White back in the chair. We'll be. Stay tuned, folks.